Q&A 2022, scene one, take one. I'm ready like Betty, let's boop boopy do this bad boy. I asked for questions and my explainers did not disappoint. You're here for my scandalous answers, so let's get this train a moving. <laughs> what was your least favorite subject you took in any school? Any variation of math that wasn't geometry. And I hear that's very common for creative folks. We can be very good at geometry because it's such a visual type of math. Now that you have a fancy treehouse, do you plan to get an animal sidekick? All right, everyone, line up here for the audition for Rebecca's animal sidekick. Those plushies aren't gonna sell themselves. Do you have funny scuba diving stories and do you still dive? I still dive sometimes, but definitely not as much as I used to when I was younger. But I have a whole slew of diving stories I could tell you and probably will in a future video. In fact, I have one big one that I have been saving in my back pocket for a special occasion. I don't know when I'll tell it to you all, but I eventually will. Did you figure out a way back into the treehouse after Laddie messed up the lift? Working on it. Do you rough sketch when you draw or do you start with the line art? I'll show you over the span of this question. I start off with very rough sketches like these. Then after that, I draw in the line art. Slap some color on this tall drink of water and you got me. Okay, I saw so many My Little Pony questions that I'm just gonna quickly blurt out stuff. My favorite pony is Applejack, followed closely by Rarity. People tell me I'm most like Rarity, but I consider myself a perfect blend of her and Applejack. My favorite song is Apples to the Core, followed closely by You're In My Head Like a Catchy Song. That episode made me cry. And while I don't know what my current pony Sona would look like, I drew this one for myself many years ago and named her Curtain Call. Do with that as you will. What's your favorite currently airing cartoon? Probably Amphibia, but there are so many great shows going on right now. What was your favorite part about designing your treehouse and where did you get the idea? I had the idea of putting Toon Becca in a physical location a couple of years ago, something to ground her while she's narrating and really reinforce that feeling of a friend inviting you in for a visit and telling you stories. And because I had expressed my love for treehouses in a previous video, I thought, what better place to put her? My favorite part in designing it was researching. I spent a lot of time on Pinterest and interior decorating websites, and I have a lot of folders on my computer filled with inspiration for the look and feel of her treehouse. And it was fun figuring out what objects Toon Becca would want in her house and the secret stories behind them. How many boxes of mac and cheese would it take to fill your bath? Uh, 24? What's your favorite step in the video making process and what's your least favorite step? Honestly, I really love writing the script and doing the overall concept development, like figuring out what the moral and the theme of the story is, narrator Rebecca's outfit, the main color of the backgrounds, just the overall look and feel of the video and what I wanna say. And my least favorite step of the process is audio editing. It's when I take all of my raw voiceover where I did a dozen takes of every line, find the best ones and edit them all together. And for a standard video of mine, you're looking at one to two hours of raw audio to sift through. I honestly wish I could hand this over to someone else, but I'm very nitpicky about line delivery and voice quality. So just imagine doing this for hours. 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 I love my job. What was the hardest project you had to do in animation school? How long did it take to do and how did it turn out? That would definitely be my thesis film, Bottled Opera. It took roughly a year and a half to make from start to finish, half of junior year and all of senior year. I lost a lot of hair, a lot of weight, and a lot of sleep while working on that project. I would even venture to say that it is the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. And I guess it turned out good? Not great, just good. I know some of you may look at it and think I'm being too hard on myself, but by animation industry standards, it barely made the cut. Fun fact, this film is the reason I sing opera now. The process of making my thesis was absolute hell, so if you want me to make a video about that story, then go ahead and let me know in the comments below. What are your pronouns? She, her. Thanks for asking. What's your favorite planet? Ever since I was a kid, my favorite has been Saturn because I like its rings. Now that you've become a toon, have you taken any precautions against a Who Framed Roger Rabbit scenario? Has there ever been a video that took a mental toll while trying to record the audio? When making my Draw My Life video, there were a couple of times that were emotionally hard for me to record or animate. When you recount your life, you're forced to revisit some painful memories and reflect on how they've affected you as a person. The moment I sat down and had to start animating the scene where I talk about dad's death, I took about 10 minutes to just sit and cry. I needed to get it out of my system so I could focus on the task at hand. Have you ever regretted becoming a YouTuber? I don't know if I've ever regretted becoming a YouTuber so much as I have missed aspects of quote unquote normal life. There are many positive things about being a YouTuber, stuff that I am endlessly grateful for, but a YouTube career can present challenges to your life as well. 
Here's just one example of many. Because of the heavy workload of maintaining a YouTube channel, it's very easy to overwork yourself and not have a healthy day-to-day work-life balance. I struggle with working too many hours to this day. But if you have a standard 9 to 5 job, you clock out at a certain hour and thereby have downtime in your day that you can dedicate to whatever you want. It creates a far healthier relationship with work, and I sometimes miss that. Who out of any Disney villain slash antagonist would you trust to hold your drink at a definitely advertiser-friendly party? This one really got me thinking, it's such a thought-provoking question. But I boiled it down to Captain Gantu from Lilo and Stitch. I picked him because while he is definitely flawed, he has standards. Sure, he's got an ego and a quick temper, but he follows orders and protocol. He's bound to rules and regulations. In his mind, in the span of the entire film, he was doing the right thing in capturing a dangerous prisoner. He wasn't going out of his way to do anything particularly evil. So I'd like to think he'd watch a drink for you and probably punch out anyone trying to mess with it. If you'd ever decide to stick to just one outfit for your animated character, what would it be? What the heck you yelling for? This isn't fate of the world stuff. There's no meteor. Just have some tea and relax. Ah! For a while now, for promotional materials and merchandise, I've tended to use this blue dress with black leggings and sandals. I call it the default dress. So if it came down to it, this would be my go-to. What are some subtle body language tricks that you use to help the expressiveness of your animation? Here are some quick tricks. One of the principles of animation is exaggeration, so pushing things here and there is going to make your body language a lot more expressive and entertaining. A teacher in animation school once told me that shoulders are the eyebrows of the body. Simply put, be sure you're utilizing the expressive capabilities of the shoulders when drawing. Be very specific about the emotion and intent behind your character's pose. This expresses very little and is kind of boring. This is very specific about what emotion it's expressing and is far more interesting to look at. And you can figure out all the best poses by doing them yourself in a mirror. This one's from TikTok. Muffins or cupcakes? Cupcakes. Though one may argue that muffins become cupcakes once you put frosting on them. Can you show us the art portfolio that you submitted to get into college? Ooh, you guys want to see more old art, do ya? Well, feast your eyes! So the thing that I remember about Ringling's portfolio requirements was you had to have exactly 10 pieces, none of it could be digital art, and they wanted to see variety in the mediums you could work in and also the things that you could paint and draw. None of this is excessively brilliant, but it got me into Ringling. But I just wanna say if I can get into animation school on this kind of portfolio, you know what, you can too. What's the weirdest thing you hate that mostly no one else does? Goat cheese. It is the single most disgusting culinary taste I have ever encountered. To cooks everywhere, keep that garbage out of my mac and cheese. What are some of your favorite channels? Well, I've got some new ones I can tell you about. Speedrun, Defunct Land. Kevin and his team create incredibly professional, accurate, and entertaining documentary videos on defunct theme parks, rides, shows, and even more. Cinema Therapy, a channel where a licensed therapist and a filmmaker sit down and discuss mental health through the themes and plots of popular movies, especially animated movies. Technical Antonym, a talented stop-motion storytime animator whose content is very smart, witty, and sincere. He's a very hard worker and deserves more subs. Sideways, an incredible channel that talks about movie soundtracks and musicals, explaining in hilarious ways how important music is in telling stories and how filmmakers have failed to properly utilize it in the past. Wildlife Aid, a channel of British people with very dry senses of humor rescuing foxes, swans, hedgehogs, and more in the heart of the UK. Donations and views are how they support their foundation, so go give them a watch to save the animals. If you could get any animal, magical creatures count, what would it be? I will be taking my Butterfree and Squirtle now. Yes, I will be taking two creatures. This isn't Sophie's choice. I love my children equally. Now excuse me, I must go buy them little outfits. What's your favorite pizza? All right, here's the Rebecca Parham official favorite pizza ever. Stuffed crust, extra cheese, ham, onions, garlic, if they have it, and pineapples. Yep, I have made my stance on this excessively important debate. Pineapples belong on pizza. I expect your declarations of war in the comments below. Have you ever wanted to do a raffle to give away original art? Wow, that is oddly specific and oddly on point. My merch team and I have a new set of art prints in the shop called the Spellbound Collection, and all three were done entirely by me. If you purchase a set of prints before the 15th of April, you will be automatically entered into our golden ticket raffle. Three lucky winners will receive actual golden tickets in their orders and win one of three original, one-of-a-kind pencil sketches I drew while designing designing these art prints. They will be signed and framed for your convenience. Link in the description below to my store, and don't forget you have to order the set before April 15th to be entered into the raffle. All right, that's all I got, explainers and entertainers. Thank you so much for tuning in, but now I gotta tune out. Bye!